Hello, my name is Dino Hoss, and today I am going to teach you how to put together an income statement, sometimes also commonly referred to as a trading and profit and loss account. In the last tutorial, we looked at constructing the trial balance, and the trial balance balances brought down are used to produce this final account known as the income statement or the trading and profit and loss account. The main users of this account will be the managers so that they can make important decisions but also the shareholders will need to know the final profit figures so that they can tell how well their investment is done in that particular company. The creditors will also be interested in the income statement so that they know whether to allow the company to take goods on credit, i.e. pay back for them at a later date. And of course, finally, the government will need to check on the company's performance so they can work out how much tax will be paid to them. The income statement is divided into two parts, the trading account and the profits and loss account. In the trading account, we work out the amount of gross profit that we have made from actually trading in the business. So, in other words, we take away what we've sold, i.e. the number of toy trains, away from how much it costs us either to make them or to buy them from our supplier. The profit and loss account, the second part of the income statement, is simply the calculation of net profit after the day-to-day -day costs or expenses of running the business have been taken away from your gross profits. The first part of the income statement is the trading account. In the trading account we work out the gross profit. In other words, how much we have made in trading from selling, in this case, our toy trains. Gross profit is calculated by taking the cost of sales away from sales. The cost of sales is calculated by taking the opening stock of toy trains at the beginning of the year, adding it to how many we purchase in terms of stock during the year from our supplier, and minusing how many toy trains we have left as closing stock at the end of the year. So if each toy train costs a pound, clearly at the beginning of the financial year we would have had 24,514 toy trains multiplied by a pound each would give us an opening stock value of 24,514. And yes, the accountants do go into the shop or the warehouse and count exactly how many items of stock are left in the warehouse or shop at the beginning and the end of the year. In this example, we would have purchased during the year 47,865 toy trains at a pound each. And at the end of the year, when the accountant has counted up how many toy trains we have left, it came to 34,217. That simply means we must have used 38,162 toy trains at a pound each during the year. Now this number is very important as the cost of sales essentially tells us how much it cost us to either make the toy trains in our factory or how much it cost us to buy from our supplier. And we can't work out our profit unless we know how much it cost us to buy the toy trains that we traded and sold on to our customers. The trading account in the income statement is laid out using two columns. The first column contains all the information on your cost of sales and the second column all the information on the actual sales of toy trains to your customers. So if we look at this particular toy train example, we have sold the toy trains for £67,865. And as we discussed earlier, the cost of either making those toy trains or buying them from our supplier was 38,162. So very simply, we take away how much it cost us from how much we sold them for, and that gives us our gross profit of 29,703 pounds. The second part of the income statement is known as the profit and loss account. This account is laid out straight underneath the trading account. To get the true final net profit figure, we have to take away our expenses from our gross profit of £29,703. 
The day-to-day -day costs of running the business would be items such as salaries and wages, the rent for the shop or the factory, any utilities, electricity bills that we might have to pay, any stationery we would have to use, and other items which we sometimes call sundry expenses such as coffee and tea for our customers. When we add together these expenses, they come to £15,151. We simply take that amount in terms of the expenses away from our gross profit to give us what is known as the operating profit, which in this case is £14,552. If you've borrowed money from the bank, the interest, which is the cost of borrowing, will also need to be minus from your profit figure. So in this case, we would take the £1,216 away from our operating profit of 14552 and that would leave us a net profit before tax of 13336 That is the figure that the tax authority or the government will look at when they come to calculate how much tax you owe them. Thanks for listening. If you found this tutorial useful, then please do wait for the next tutorial to load up in the playlist. Remember, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if you did find this tutorial uh, helpful, then please hit the like button.